I wanted to just take us through a timeline of what it means to really be measuring atoms. And so Democritus is one of the first people to begin to describe our physical world. And then John Dalton is one of the first people to actually uh, perform experiments and begin understanding our physical world. Up next, we have J.J. Thompson. So J.J. Thompson's work is really critical because he's the first person to actually show that magnetism can begin to move and change these atoms. He's actually the developer of the mass spectrometer. What it did allow us to do is begin to measure and look at atoms in a different way. He's also the first person to notice that if he changed the magnetism, he could actually get a beam of what was pure gas to begin to, to move. So he's the first person to suggest that maybe there's a thing as stable isotopes or an atom existing in more than one form. A student of his is Ernest Rutherford. So Rutherford works with J.J. Thomas. So first what he does is he studies a nuclear decay and, and he begins to discover that atoms are actually sort of trying to find a nice neutral charge. And in doing so, they'll actually emit radiation. And he discovers alpha and beta radiation. And he discovers that atoms are changing from one form to another. He found that atoms would actually bounce back and off. He describes the atom as having a centralized positive nucleus. And he works with Sir James Chadwick to discover and describe the neutron, the no charge atom. I just wanted to highlight the fact that for over a hundred years now, we've understood the nucleus and we've been measuring atoms in a variety of ways for, for different reasons. We've been investigating and trying to describe our physical world using and measuring atoms for a very long time. So Harold Urey, he takes all this work that's been done before him and he suggests, well, if there are differences in these isotopes, maybe it's a way that I can concentrate these heavy isotopes. And what he does is he performs several experiments showing that he actually can isolate these different isotopes. And I just wanted to highlight Harold Urey because he sort of takes all this real high level physical thought and he begins to apply it to our everyday world and to our environment. So why did I bring up all this atomic theory? Well, you know, what we do is we use all these historic innovations and cutting edge technology to measure these atoms. And in doing so, we can answer a variety of questions. But what's great about this kind of work is that it's sort of limited to your creativity. If you're looking for a change, you can potentially measure the atoms and see if that change really happened. And by measuring several different changes, we can begin to understand our physical world in ways that we could not before. That's pretty much why I wanted to go over the history with you so you guys can get a feeling for this science being well-established and also very well honed over the last nearly 90, 100 years.